This time around, we're discussing why you wouldn't survive the crazy Trixie virus outbreak. The U.S. military, in its efforts to administer freedom and liberty across the world, has always tried to stay up to date and above other countries when it comes to weapons of mass destruction, from drones to nuclear to possibly even biological warfare. Attempting to make a new bioweapon based on the Rhabdoviridae, a family of negative strand RNA viruses mostly associated with rabies and having the potential to infect a large number of invertebrates. Utilizing multiple strains of different rhabdoviruses and their capabilities of creating hostility and violent tendencies in afflicted individuals, Individuals, did the U.S. military repurpose this new proto-rhabdoviridae into a prototype bioweapon to be referred to as the Trixie virus? Now, why the virus had been codenamed Trixie is a bit confusing, though, since the name Trixie derives from its Latin origins, meaning bringer of joy, or she who blesses, but can also refer to a person as obedient, loyal, and an influencer to others via their good nature, which in all regards, this virus has no positive nature to it whatsoever, since it is not transmittable between people and makes them irrationally angry and violent. I really don't see these kinds of folks bring in any joy anytime soon. But considering how its intended purpose would be to use its infectiousness through water and even air to patriotically administer to enemy strongholds and cities, to decentralize and destabilize the population by sending a majority of the population into a bloodied frenzy so they are basically fighting amongst themselves. While this occurs, the armed forces could come in, adorning biohazard apparel, and sweep up both those infected with the disease and to wipe out any remaining stragglers to achieve swifter and more brutal victory. However, for unknown reasons, the very nature of the biological weapon had become too potent and unmanageable even for the United States military to contain. It was originally intended to be delivered from its undisclosed research facility and flown out to the good old Lone Star State of Texas, where it would be completely eradicated through incineration. However, through the events of the movie, the fate for this man-made disease would not come to pass as the carrier holding the Trixie virus abruptly crashed into an open body of water known as the Hopman Bog which in turn was the water supply of the nearby town of Ogden Marsh. Now it doesn't take a smart city slicker like Roanoke Gaiman to note how and why this virus was able to infect the local population so easily. So as to not read off verbatim what occurs within the movie, let's discuss what this virus does more in detail and place that in a more widespread outbreak later on to truly make this a why you wouldn't survive scenario. Which, before then, may be a determining factor into what made the crazies crazy in the first place was because they didn't have their balls trimmed. You know who would rectify that situation? Manscaped.com, today's sponsor. It's always good to stay on top of your personal hygiene. Because let's face it, the buildup of sweat and bacteria in the nether region can lead to nasty odors. Up your game with the Performance Package 4.0 by Manscaped that has everything you need to take your trim, snip, and clean your junk to the next level. With great products like the Lawnmower 4.0 to keep the front lawn trimmed down, finish off that cut with the Crop Preserver Ball Deodorant and the Crop Reviver Ball Toner Spray to make sure your testicles aren't smelling like a Smash Brothers tournament. And that's only after two spritzes of the Crop Reviver. The package also slaps in so much more to keep you feeling fresh like the Weed Whacker Nose and Ear Hair Trimmer because you'll need to hear and smell better, especially with the impending threat of a zombie apocalypse that may or may not happen. Want to show off to the ladies and lads that you got some nicely trimmed ballistic spheres. Included also is a shed travel bag and the Manscaped anti-chafing boxer briefs. I usually don't like boxer briefs, but I put these on and they're actually pretty comfortable. That's a whole lot to treat your balls the way they deserve to be treated. And you can get 20% off plus free shipping when you use my code WOW20 at manscaped.com. That's WOW20 at checkout. Thank you, Manscaped, for sponsoring today's video. Let's get back to it. Being able to lie within water and infect unwary people that may drink or bathe in it, the ramifications of this disease being administered at precise target locations in majorly populated areas could see this outbreak becoming much more deadly than we initially spectated within the small town of Ogden Marsh. Upon the virus entering and infecting the body, a veritable biological clock will begin ticking over the course of 72 hours. In the beginning stages of Trixie's invasion of the blood and to the brainstem, a person will display a variety of randomized symptoms. Some may begin to bleed from the nose or eyes. Others may cough or convulse uncontrollably. Some may laugh hysterically. But more so, most will begin to stare blankly into nothingness, almost as if they are completely spaced out and void of thought. 
what. They will barely speak whatsoever of their sudden change in demeanor, no matter how proactive or energetic they may have been before. Any questioning of their current state of mind will either be met with continued silence or neutral and empty words to attempt to ensure others they are fine. Much like most Americans when they are asked, How are you, darling? I'm fine. Just a little tired. Which may be a response the virus is using when taking hold of the brain, basically utilizing a default verbatim copy-paste saying to attempt to pass off any suspicion. They may also whisper, sing, and hum familiar tunes that resonated in their minds before infection that may try and soothe them in times of stress or while they are biding their time as their blank expressions of these infected will soon be overridden to a more bloodthirsty state of mind when the time is right. Unlike traditional means of an infected person becoming a mindless, feral ghoul looking to infect others like those seen in just about every zombie and infected outbreak, this one looks to be immediately more gruesome while actively not having its infected seek to infect others. The crazies or the infected, you know what, actually, since this takes place in the South, let's just call them Trixie Dixies. These Trixie Dixies will lose most, if not all, sense of self. They will be driven by insane paranoia and a need to kill any anyone that isn't infected like them. But to reiterate, they will not attack in a manner similar to a feral infected. Biting, scratching, punching, or anything like that, well, unless they have no options, but that's not 100% of their capabilities. The Trixie virus, once inside a host, will in no manner, shape, or form intentionally or purposefully try to infect other people because the virus cannot be transmitted through bodily fluids just like just about any other infected. For all intents and purposes, Trixie Dixies are reprogrammed to outright kill non-infected in any way they can by using their retained intelligence and tacticality. Trixie Dixies can and will have the know-how to operate firearms, use objects efficiently as weapons, use tools in sadistic ways, and even set up bait to lure in victims to trap them and possibly burn them alive, gouge out their eyes, or just ambush them to butcher them alive. They will seemingly just be insane individuals operating of their own accord, stabbing, shooting, and finding a litany of ways to kill people as blank versions of themselves. You can outrun a feral infected trying to seek its teeth into you, but a Trixie Dixie packing a 12 gauge shotgun? Not likely. Infected will also be able to determine other people afflicted with the virus. If the infected in question is either incapacitated or unable to serve the purposes of murder that the virus is so vehemently trying to get these people to do, then the able-bodied infected that is witnessing this incapacitated infected will simply just kill them. However, if they run into other active Trixie Dixies out in the open of equal killing capabilities, they will work in tandem with them in order to achieve kill streaks and rack up their KD ratio. Their deadliness factor will magnify the more the virus affects larger and more populated areas. If a waterborne, even potentially airborne virus like this were to invade the drinking water of a major city like Hong Kong, Baghdad, or Mumbai, thousands upon thousands of people would display these symptoms, but would more quickly resort to murder-ridden chaos. Now, the reason I bring this up is the instances of Ogden Marsh having a slow crawl of a start with the Trixie disaster was simply because it's infected count trickled in with this small population with a few people here and a few people there at first under the watchful eye of the U.S. military via drones. Infected here will be more docile and reserve themselves to staring blankly, riding bicycles and singing songs in creepy manners, chanting phrases to crowds of dead for no audiences, and being a seemingly non-threat as the virus discerns the host body it has forced itself into with blind paranoia cannot adequately kill if it were to be met with overwhelming opposition, the virus realizes as a single entity that its host body would not be able to kill efficiently if it was 1 versus 30, so they have to become docile in the meantime. As the movie progresses though, and more Trixie Dixies begin to crop up, this visage of emptiness will soon be phased out of the pandemic, as the infected cut to the chase and stop this blank staring stuff, and just work together to slaughter. If there is more of their infected numbers versus the non-infected, they will skip the docile phase and go straight to killing. And in the case of the virus starting in a large city, this would just be the case. 
While city officials, armed response, and government entities struggle to discern the sudden instance of chaos in the streets, more and more people that have drank or bathed in this water supply will turn as non-infected will see their friends and loved ones draw weapons on them, drive their vehicles off-road, or put them in life-threatening situations, all in seemingly an instant. They will do whatever they can to execute others, pretending to be dead after being hurt or left alone in holding cells just to spring to life to kill someone that has freed them or come to check on their well-being, leaving their victims barely alive to draw in helpful individuals from afar so they can attack them while they try to help. Attacking populated areas and fenced off vicinities with heavy weaponry and mowing people down for sport and or pleasure. Strangling someone with a string of wire or if nothing else is immediately available at the time, just purely mauling someone to death with their bare hands. Trixie Dixies will vary in their mannerisms. Rednecks that hunted deer for sport will have the virus use this to its advantage as those very same people will hunt non-infected people in a very similar manner and pile up their dead bodies in the back of their trucks like livestock as they drive around looking for victims saying i shot him right in the heart skeeter yeah you did billy bob oh my god we got ourselves another one back of attack boys the virus could see to using other weapon savvy tactical and intelligent people to use their advantages to its advantage imagine entire police force succumbing to the virus and actively coming together pulling people over just to execute them on the spot or maybe a whole gang like the bloods and crips coming together finally under the trixie virus and start killing together whatever the trixie virus can do to utilize the best methods of mass murder, it will do so in spades. Now, if you recall earlier, I said these infected will have a biological clock ticking away over the span of 72 hours. Well, within the last day of this infection, the Trixie Dixie will start to show visible symptoms of the virus, with their veins blackening, protruding through the skin, their eyes heavily reddening, and their violent tendencies ramping up to a fever pitch. In this final day, third day Trixie Dixies will be at their most deadly. Now, dialing back a bit, those that are in their first day of infection may not immediately kill their victims. The mortician that stitched the eyes and mouth shut of his passed out victim used him as bait and did not kill him instantaneously. Also, we had the mother and son combo binding and gagging a woman to a chair so the police officer would come to help her and then ambushing him trying to strangle him. Or for the most normal, I guess you could say, the rednecks that are actively hunting hunting non-infected people like it's the most dangerous game type scenario as if they were hunting deer, hooting and hollering and celebrating killing their prey much like rednecks hunting a deer for sport. Now that's just the first day infected though. Third day infected will not hesitate to kill with any modicum of humanity. This being a probable response of the brain attempting to fulfill its paranoia while it knowingly is dying from the Trixie virus's influence and immense toll on the body. Around 72 hours hours after initial infection, the host will die a horrifically painful death leaving nothing behind but a medically horrific corpse. There is no cure or no answer to you or those around you when the Trixie is inside of you. You will kill, you will bane, and you will dismember until your body overclocks itself and shuts down. With the sheer urgence of the virus and keeping it contained and out of both the public eye and enemy entities' hands, the U.S. government would keep close surveillance on the virus's initial outbreak for a short time. Depending on the severity of the situation and how many potential infected could crop up for the water source it has afflicted, the government infantry would swoop in and quarantine any and all areas potentially crashing to this ensuing pandemic. However, unlike normal medical outbreaks, we're simply keeping potential infected and sterile holding camps and weeding out non-infected personnel is the golden ideal. A large majority of the time with the Trixie virus, violent people brandishing firearms, explosives, fast-moving vehicles, and other methods not manageable in large numbers would easily see to any quarantine methods that are imposed by the government being nothing but futile. They would have to resort to executing anyone involved within the radius of this outbreak, and it will be mandatory to prevent the virus spreading beyond its water and people in case it were to mutate and become airborne amongst the physiology of increasing numbers of people and to not allow words of this mind-altering virus to get out in any way, shape, or form. As seen within the movie, the military stuck bracelets on non-infected people, herded them into trucks like cattle, and drove them away only to execute each and every one of them until eventually, when all else fails, launching a nuclear strike on the focal point of the virus and its body count 
and water supply, effectively eradicating anyone and everyone. Well, except for a few people, but basically you will be herded, shot, and your body will just be eradicated by nuclear hellfire. Now, when it comes down to it, you can outright come out and say, well, I only drink bottled water. I don't drink from the tap. I drink bottled water exclusively. Tap water has fluoride in it and I'm not letting my mind get mind controlled. Well, there's a lot of stuff that can still have a water supply get into you. There's a whole bunch of different ways that tap water can be invading your system. And you could also say all I have to do is stay holed up in a safe area and just wait out the 72 hours before the bulk of the infected die out. Well, that's a very accurate depiction, but um, there's a lot more going on. This is not going to be the case, Skeeter. This isn't a normal case of generic zombies knocking at your front door. They're not going to be knocking, baby. Intelligent infected will discern your location. And remember this, they don't care to infect you. They want you dead. They're not going to try to keep you alive. The crazies themselves could also see that you're holed up in this house and just set your house or place the safety ablaze and let you burn alive. There's a whole bunch of ways to kill you to no matter where you might be. It's not brainless zombies this time around. Or, you know what? While your house is burning and you try to escape the blaze, well, they got some guns drawn and they're going to shoot you as soon as you run out. These are still people that retain the know-how to get you out and kill you however possible. Your family and friends may use their former memories with you to lure you into a false sense of security and, as you approach, slit your throat and watch you bleed out with a blank expression on their face. Can you really reason with a former family member or friend that is just this blank-faced person maybe humming something that was a connection between you? and all of a sudden you're just stabbed in the head? They cannot be reasoned with. You will have to kill anyone displaying abnormal behaviors almost immediately or else they will kill you before then. Keep in mind also the people around you, distrust among the masses, not knowing who was infected and ready to kill you in the blink of an eye. And there's going to be a lot of people mistakenly killing each other because they think they might potentially be sick with this disease. And also, you're going to have to double tap any aggressors that are not shot in the head to prevent them from playing possum and then attacking you further. They could pretend to be dead and then spring up and try to kill you. While the virus can't be spread through bodily fluids, which is a bit refreshing to say for once in this damn series, there's a lot of outbreaks that spread through bodily fluids. But if you have bathed or drank from this water in any way, you will be converted in no time, only to die to those protecting themselves or to the virus being done with you in three days. Even if the thought of the crazies killing you in a variety of different ways doesn't already have you thinking you're dead, armed military personnel with guns and flamethrowers will have you change in your mind. You will be backed into a corner. While the crazies may just be normal humans with no enhancement in strength and durability outside some increased levels of adrenaline, you'll still have to go up against a foe with blind, determinate rage in their eyes. They have no other goals in their existence except to snuff you out. Now, whatever you have planned to survive with whatever weapons and provisions you have stockpiled, you will have to make sure you can outmuscle and outsmart someone who wants nothing more than to see you dead. Whether that be a crazy tricksy ridden infected or the might of the US military which is an analogy by the late George A. Romero showing how in times of crisis like this who are the true monsters and who can you go to to stay alive the ones that are in the military trying to kill you or the zombies trying to kill you Ooh. but yes you have these intelligent infected, the military that is going to wipe you out because they cannot risk this virus from getting any further. But if you think of it in a more expansive light though, we see the military setting their sights on other more populated cities by the end of the movie, showing, possibly hinting at the idea that the virus had already run downstream to other civilized areas and widened the Trixie's influence. That, or it could be possible that it can be transmitted through bodily fluids in some way, shape, or form, or 
other methods, but more terrifyingly so if you do think about it even more, if a terrorist organization or hostile government entity were to utilize this ungodly biological weapon to systematically attack key points of mass water supplies infecting major water sources across countries and cities across the world, this virus would lead to what would be an end of world scenario or a pandemic that would exterminate a majority of mankind. The bodies of the countless crazies, the dead, and more piling up as they run across the land, potentially dying in other sources of water, could allow this virus to spread further, especially if it were to mutate and become airborne. Now it's even possible that this waterborne disease could be virulent enough that it could retain itself into the rain cycle of our very rainwater, allowing the very clouds above us to rain down the virus and making all open bodies of water eventually harboring areas for the Trixie virus. Yes, that is a hell of a long shot, and I'm sure there's somebody in the comments saying there's no way for a virus to be able to go up into the clouds and come back down and rain. But if a series like Netflix's The Rain could have a disease jump this virile shark and become this biological weapon that comes down and be able to transmit through rain, who's to say a man-made biological weapon that kind of goes against all conventions of medical science that the government nuked an entire city over isn't capable of evaporating into thin air and returning in a downpour or mist that could become a vector or airborne disease that humanity will fear and eventually succumb to. So, bottom line, if this were to become widespread enough, you will have to be disconnected from any water supplies ripe with the virus, be able to not be discovered and mangled by the crazies, not be executed by fearful, healthy people, not be herded into cages and shot in the head and burned by military personnel, dying to nuclear hellfire as the government's last-ditch effort to eradicate the virus, being a survivor of the outbreak and being hunted down by military spy drones, soldiers, or helicopters if this were an isolated incident in a small town like in the movie, or potentially living long enough to see most of humanity's drinkable water be unusable if it were to become part of our reign. The crazies might not live beyond 72 hours, but the virus that made them crazy could very easily stay and turn the remainder of mankind into the truly crazy ones themselves. That about wraps up this video. The outros are short now, but thank you to all these guys for donating. Thanks to Wisefish for editing this video. And until next time, stay happy, stay healthy, and you know what I'm gonna say next? It is to stay wild, baby. See you next time.